guys, this is Production Music Live. My name is Francois and today we're going to take a look at the washout or fade to gray effect here down in this rack. And in this case, I have this Ableton rack here with a bunch of effects, but uh, mainly focusing on the fade to gray effect. And I have it loaded up on the master channel of my track Giants. And there are different use cases. For example, you can use the fade to gray effect when DJing, when playing live, and you want to mix from one track into another, then you can simply use this effect to fade out one of the tracks and have the other one come in more smoothly. Or you can use it within one of your tracks that you're working on and maybe use it on the sum of all elements on your master channel to sort of, for example, make your drops hit harder, or, you know, put it somewhere in a break so you're creating sort of tension, rising up feeling, and then release, something like that. So you can use it on the sum of your elements, but you can also use it on parts of your track. For example, I could try to like keep the drumming and the bass stable and just use it on the instrument elements of the track. So in this case, I would drag this whole rack just on the, these are the instruments, our instruments group. So if I solo this. And if we put it into the context of the song, we have this drop here. Or you can drop it on the drums section here where we have our hi-hats and drum elements and then we would keep like the instruments fixed and the kick and bass fixed. Okay, so these are a couple of use cases and let's now put it back onto the master channel right here. I'm putting a limiter behind just to catch some nasty peaks and save your ears. And let's open up this rack and take a closer look into, I have a bunch of effect racks in here. So basically how this is set up, we have a couple of audio effect racks stacked into one another and I'm quickly going to take a closer look into it in a second. But let's take a look at how the fade to gray effect is set up and I have it right here. And by the way, you can get this whole rack in a link in the description if you're dying of curiosity right now. And um, See, this is another audio effect rack and we have a simple delay combined with an auto filter combined, I can actually upgrade this, I made it in an earlier version of Ableton, and combined with a large stage reverb combined with a utility at the end of the chain. So all these four elements are linked into this one fader knob right here. And basically the way you set this up, you, you would like stack them into one of these audio racks and then you right click and say, okay, map to, for example, macro one. And so this macro now controls this fader. But the nice thing about it is I can like uh, stack another one, like I can have this knob here control more than one of these other knobs. I could like assign the phase to that one as well. And now you see both of them are moving along as, as soon as I'm moving around with this fader. So I'm undoing both of these things right now. And in this case, this fade knob once more is assigned to the next effect rack where it's placed into. So this one here is like the master knob. It does the exact movement this one is doing, but you know, we have stacked effect racks in here and have more effects available in this entire rack in front. 
Let's quickly see what happens if I'm playing around with this fade to gray knob here. Let's play this uh, song again. <laughs> So you see um, like the filter is moving up here, the dry red of the reverb is moving up, the dry red of the simple delay is moving up slightly and then also the gain of this utility is compensating a little bit for the loss in overall loudness through cutting off so many low frequencies here. If we are opening up the map knob right here, we can see the actual values. For example, if I'm going into the auto filter, you can see this one is showing up three times. And first of all, we are actually saying when this knob is at zero, we want the auto filter to be deactivated. So off, basically we can automate this on off switch here. And we're saying if this thing is at zero or at position one, this thing is off and if it's at one of the other positions up here somewhere in between 2 and 127 because all of these knobs have 128 positions basically 0 to 127 and you can assign these values to all these faders here so we are saying if this thing is at 0 this is off if it's at 1 this is off to keep a little bit of wiggle room down here and then if it's at two or higher this thing turns on and also in the beginning the simple delay dry wet should be at zero and if we're going up to the maximum value of this fader it should be at 53 and the same thing with the frequency knob of this low cut filter here where we have um, we are starting at the lowest value and then the maximum value we want to go up. We don't want to lose everything. We don't want to filter out everything. We are stopping at 3 kilohertz for, for example, right here. We are putting a little bit of resonance in there, but we are stopping at like this fader up 22% of the overall values available. And with our large stage reverb, we are only bringing this up to like 80%. And with our utility, we are compensating with, you know, eight decibels of lost power here, bringing this up, making everything a little bit louder. Now, this looks very technical and might be confusing. And let's just like build one quickly from scratch. So um, I'm closing this down. I'm actually going to deactivate this one. And we are quickly going to load an audio effect rack. And into that one, we are going to drop a simple delay. And we are also going to need an auto filter behind that one. And then we are also going to need a reverb large stage. Let's pick up this one. And finally, we are going to need a utility. So this is uh, what's needed, our ingredients right here. And then open up the macro control section of this audio effect track and set this one to two by two here. Put the feedback up to 57, which was a good value in my opinion. And then right click, dry wet and map to, let's say macro one right here. So now this one adjusts this knob. And going over to the filter section, um, let's actually set it to low pass and you know, assign the frequency knob to the first macro as well and the resonance to the first macro as well. And also assign this one, the on off switch, always right clicking here to the first macro as well. You can actually right click here and rename this one to fade to gray or washout. And then also the dry wet of our reverb, right click map to fade to gray. And finally, the output of the utility map to fade to gray as well. Now open this map switch over here and see all these values are showing up right here. And as we had before, we were saying basically our 
you know, a simple delay won't open up all the way because that is just too crazily applied and you don't want to hear that in a club anymore. It doesn't sound nice. Bring it up to like 53% or something like that. That would be the maximum open up value for this dry wet knob. And then the device on off switch, we said like go down to two and like have it active at two until 27 and everything below two deactivates this uh, switch right here. And moving over to filter frequency, we are saying we are only going to go up until something like 3.4 kilohertz, for example. That's where we're stopping. We're leaving the higher frequencies active. And the resonance, we were saying 22 or 20% 20 or something like that. We don't want to move this up too crazily. It will like ring in, in the club. It will ring in your ears. Bring our um, large stage reverb only up like 80%. That would be the maximum value for fully opened up fade to gray here. Like, how do I know these values? So, like, I tested around. I just tested it and I came up with, you know, these are pretty good values. You, of course, you can disagree and use different ones. No problem. The minimum value for our utility should be zero decibels and the maximum somewhere around eight decibels. So right now we have this setup and it should basically sound the same as the other one. So let's close it down and play it. Okay, and just as another explanation here, I'm using the auto filter to cut out low frequencies when adding in more delay because it sounds super weird if you're like delaying kicks and bass in a club. It's far too heavy, like it doesn't sound nice anymore. It's nothing you really want to have there. So just making sure we're cleaning up the low end when adding so much delay and reverb. Okay, you can also like get creative and use other stuff, maybe not a you know, large stage reverb or something. You could also combine simple delays with bit crushers, for example, with a redux effect. And actually, if we are going back using our initial deck control where I'm combining a couple of effects, you can see next to the group or the rack of fade to gray effects, I have a redux rack where I'm basically working with a redux effect opening up this one a little, you know, and also opening up this auto filter and adding a little bit of high frequencies to the show. So we are emphasizing a bit on this area when opening up and when adding in Redux. So let's see what this sounds like. Also put in like a repeater, which would be um, basically using beat repeat, for example. Or simply reverb, add in reverb and cut the lows. Sometimes that already helps a lot to keep your track more interesting or parts of your track or the sum of your elements on the master. Okay, and then there's another interesting thing you can do I wanted to show you, which is like sometimes you don't have a track like this and you can like say, okay, let's just throw this on our drums or on our instruments or something to create tension in parts of our song. Actually, sometimes you're working with an MP3 or just a WAV file and you still want to, you know, um, Use this effect on a part or a certain frequency range of your track, but not everything. For example, sometimes you would want to use a fade to gray effect, but still have your kick and bass heavily applied. And in this case, if we close this down and make this tiny here, and we can use something called multi-band splitting. If your head is already exploding, you can very well finish the video here. I'm just going to introduce one more thing that I find quite interesting. 
And uh, let's open it up and you see I have a multi-band compressor here with three different bands. High frequencies right here, so everything above 4.8 kilohertz. And then we have our mid frequencies here, that's everything between 4.8 kilohertz and you know, 800 hertz. And then we have our lowest frequencies, which is everything below that. And we actually have this thing loaded up three times. Just being the difference, here we are soloing the high frequencies, here we are soloing the mid frequencies, and here we are soloing the low frequencies. So we are just passing one band. But all of them are active, and in this case right now, if we apply this on the track, it would sound absolutely the same with and without it. Let's play it. about it is we have our track divided into three major bands here and now we can actually go inside and apply such stuff just on the mid frequencies. So if I'm going in here I'm dragging this into the mid one and then I'm playing around with fade to gray. Bass keeps playing the way it was playing all the time and high frequencies as well but we're like messing around with the mid frequencies. <laughs> And I can also throw this just on the highest frequencies, for example. So going in here and putting it in there. And nothing on the mid frequencies, nothing on the low ones right now. And over here we could also like mess around with the redox effect. So put redox effect on our highest frequencies. You know, this should be very interesting if you're playing live and you have some, like, maybe you have two tracks that are somewhat similar, but in the middle, in the mid frequencies, you have like very different harmonic content and you want to sort of mix from one into the other. And then you just like want to like wash out the, like the harmonic content, like the main instruments of one track to like get some room for the main mid frequency instruments of the other track when mixing it over when transitioning over. So this is multiband splitter. It should be very useful for such purposes. And wrapping up, we have our deck control here with the fade to gray effect which basically allows you to like make your track within your track more interesting like with risers with release with building up tension releasing tension maybe on the entire thing in a break towards a drop or something or also on groups of track elements also works nicely then you can also use the same logic of effects when playing live and you know applying this on complete tracks when you want to mix from one track into another one. And then adding in multi-band splitting might even make it even more interesting. So I hope you enjoyed the session. Feel free to visit Production Music Live, our website supporting this channel and giving us the ability to put out videos like this. Also, feel free to take a look at our Techno Ableton templates, for example. We also have sound packs like drum sample packs and stuff and full Ableton courses where we are making tracks like this one, for example, from start to finish. This, for example, is from our course Melodic Techno Track from start to finish. Leave a comment and a like, subscribe to our channel, and I hope to see you next time.